You're listening to the KB Podcast Network. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kingdom Bringer Podcast. It is Easter Sunday. I'm at home on Easter. This is Cray Cray. We got quarantine going on. Everything's a little bit different. We've talked about it the last couple episodes. You're probably hearing about it from the news. You're probably hearing about it from every podcast that you're listening to, but you get to hear about it from me and my household. Quarantine, COVID-19 has made everything different. And this year was a different kind of Easter. It was a different kind of Holy Week altogether. And this episode is going to be a little bit different because for the first time ever in the history of the Kingdom Bringer podcast, I have a member of my family. Say what's up, member. What's up, member? So that is Ashton. She is the voice of the KB Podcast Network. (laughs) (laughs) You guys ever heard her do her thing? She's so awesome. And this is very uncomfortable for her, but she told me she would do this with me. So thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome, father. She's the youngest of the Eubanks tribe, and she's awesome. (laughs) <laughs> She's very cool. But I wanted to have her on because we did a kind of a cool thing this this year with everything being different. I like, and I want to encourage you guys that are listening to to shoot me an email, darren at kingdombringer.com, D-A-R-I-N at kingdombringer.com. Let me know how things are different for you. Let me know maybe something that you're doing different this year, maybe specifically for Easter, Holy Week that you haven't done before shoot me an email i'd love to hear i'd love to talk about it on the next episode but this year in our household we did something a little bit different we actually had ashton she was having a conversation with her mama about how she felt like she was struggling in her relationship with jesus is that how that went is that what she said yes okay what was the what was your point of that? What was your heart behind that? Were you prodded on that or did you just bring that up to your mom? Um, well, I've been, I was feeling that for a while and then I, me and my mom were just sitting on the couch and not really doing anything. So I was just bringing that up. Why did you, why did you feel like you needed to bring that up with her? Because I knew that she could like help me with that and like we could think of ideas to help me draw closer to him and do things. That's awesome. So one of the things that you're very gifted at is drawing. And one thing that we really encourage with you is to, uh, to use your giftings and to go after that. And one thing that you've done in the past is like prophetic art, right? You've kind of gotten into that a little bit. Yes. And so we encouraged you to, uh, during this time of maybe struggling in your relationship with Jesus, I, would you say it was like a dry, like a dry relationship? Like, how would you describe where you were at in your relationship with Jesus? Um, probably like, I don't know. I felt like I was. It wasn't like I was so far away. Like I wasn't right like that. But I don't really know how to yeah describe it. Okay, that's cool. So that's a good. As a parent, I want to hear my child come to me and talk to me about struggles or questions or anything have you ever had the impression that there are certain questions that are off limits to ask us do you feel like there's certain questions that you can't ask us no no like i've i've made that pretty clear right if you have questions about your faith or questions about your walk with jesus that you can ask us right yeah yeah and so i was honored and pleased to hear i actually came upstairs and jamie kind of filled me in on what was going on, the conversation we were having. And I love it. I love 
The last thing I want is for a child to sit on these things by themselves and not feel like they can communicate with us. Because we all, we all question things. We all struggle with things. And having somebody to be honest with and open up with is kind of step one in, in finding the truth. Because we don't, we don't uh, invent truth. We discover it. And so I'm always encouraging my daughters to, to seek after truth. And so I was pleased when, when you, Ashton, were admitting and confessing that you were in a place of struggling with your, with your walk. And so what we did, Jamie had this cool idea of during Holy week, she had, cause this was like last, this was last weekend that this conversation was had. And Jamie had just come across this cool, um, this cool graphic that had a, a day for every day of the week of Holy week. Right. The first one was what, what was the first day on that deal? It was like Palm the, Sunday. Palm Sunday, right? So like the triumphant entry, right? Mm-hmm. And then the second day was what? You remember? It was the plot to kill Jesus. The plot to kill Jesus. And then the third one? Was the Last Supper. The Last Supper. Fourth one? The arrest. The, his arrest. The, the trial. The trial. The crucifixion. And then the resurrection. Crucifixion and resurrection. And so what we encourage you to do was get alone with the Lord for each one of those days and through that time with him you would have you would draw a picture right to represent the setting for that day pretty mm-hmm. much and so what was really cool that first day you came down the triumphant entry you drew a really cool picture of, of Jesus on a donkey and the people laying down the olive branches and welcoming in the king right and then the next day was the plot to kill Jesus so this was really cool watching my daughter who was struggling with her relationship with Jesus. We simply encouraged her to get alone with the Lord, to uh, do her gifts, like do what she's gifted at with the Lord. And I wanted you to talk about that. Was it the third day? The Last Supper. Yeah, the, the Last mm-hmm. Supper day. I want you to talk about that experience and what you kind of went through during that time. Um, that one probably was my favorite because it was more personal to me because, um, when I was drawing it, like, well, when I first was thinking of how I was going to draw it, I was like imagining like all the disciples and Jesus, like just like the famous last Last supper picture. Yeah. But he was like saying like, I want this to be like, just like intimate with me and you personal, like, yeah, like, like personalize it. And so, like, when I drew it, I didn't draw, like, all the disciples. I, like, drew Jesus, like, at the head of the table. And he was, like, just looking. It made it look like he was looking at me in the picture. And so, like, yeah. whenever we, like, do communion or whatever, he's, like, just it wanted to be, like, face-to-face. and Personal. Yeah. Do you feel like this act, because you finished this up, right? Yes. You're done with this? Do you feel like this experience and doing these activities with your giftings, with the Lord, carving out specific time to spend with him and focus on uh, this task or this this project with him, coming out of that, how do you feel like your relationship has grown or gotten worse or, st- th- or stayed the same? <laughs> has your relationship with Jesus gotten worse, gotten better, or stayed the same? Um, well, I think it's gotten better just because of like a little better, just because of me personalizing them and him actually talking and communicating together with that. And I think that was, so you said he good. talks, how, how do you feel like he talks to you? Cause not everybody understands that. Not everybody hears the Lord or understands like the Lord's voice. How does he talk to you specifically when you're doing like your art or when you're doing your music or whatever? How do you feel like he talks to you? Well, usually I hear, oh, I don't hear. I hear, I like see a picture that he shows me and then I kind of go from there. Draw it out? Yeah. So you've done that for, you've done some prophetic art for people before. Um, What's your process for that? Like if we say, hey, you're going to do, we want you to do some prophetic art for your grandma. What would be your process for that? First, I 
start praying and asking the Lord for like a verse or anything that he wants me to show them. And then whatever it is, and that's, I start drawing it. And then like I write on the back of what I heard or saw and then I give it to them. That's awesome. Do you feel like people are encouraged by that? I think so. Yes. Have you had any people tell you that before? Yes. Yeah. Some people have been, um, like they've either been going through that. Like, so that means like a lot to them at that moment, like that I gave it to them. Yeah. If that makes sense. That does make sense. That's good. So this is a different kind of Easter this year. I think the story is the same. Jesus is the same. Uh, we have every opportunity and I'll be honest, I'm kind of talking to the people now, but Easter and Christmas for me have always just been really difficult being involved in the church. I've always kind of worked in the church or had responsibility in the church or just served in the church. And Easter and Christmas for me have always been a struggle because it's always been like the same old thing, same story told, same processes are done. And the last thing that I've wanted to do the last few years is like go to church on Easter and Christmas. And that that's sad. It kind of breaks my heart a little bit, but it's the truth. And so this year was a little bit different. Most people in the United States are trying to figure out a different way to celebrate Easter or to do church or do this thing together. And it's just, it's the way, it's the way it's going. And so for us doing this little simple project, cause all three of us kind of did it. We all focused on one day of this Holy week. Ashton got to get alone with the Lord and, and draw a picture. And it's beautiful. Maybe I'll post some of these photos at the Kingdom Bringer podcast page, Ashton. <laughs> but it's funny. good. No, I'm serious. They're they're really good. And it was encouraging to watch you. I do believe that when you get alone with the Lord and you actually hear him talk or feel his presence, that your relationship gets better, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's something you can do. What would you, you're 14 years old, right? Is that right? 14? Um, Yeah, I think so. Okay, thanks. 14 years old, how would you speak to those people out there right now that don't think that they have access to hearing the Lord's voice or that they can understand his presence? What would you say to them? What's something that works for you in those, in those places where you question whether or not you're actually hearing his voice? What would you say to them? Um, I would say probably like find a, maybe like a, special talent that he's given you and you can use that to like praise him and do all these things and like sp communicate and speak to him through that. Cause, cause, because, because not everybody likes drawing, right? Yeah. What are some, what are some gifts and talents that you think people might have that they could do that with? Maybe music, um, like being just any creative with like other stuff, not just drawing, but, um, what is it about being creative that, that draws you closer to him? You think? Because I feel like that's like, since that's like a talent that he has given me, I feel like he's just speaks to me more through that. And I'm like, he just guides my pencil and stuff and I can. It's good. No, he's, I mean, you were created in what image? His image. His image. And he's the what? He's the creator, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's something about being creative. I think that draws us closer to his nature and his nature is a, a creative nature. Right. And so, no, that's good. I appreciate you sharing that. So what is it with you guys? What What's something different that you've had to do or something different that you can do that not only will uh, be beneficial to you, but your whole family? What's something you can encourage your children to do a little bit differently, especially since we're not really gathering together as a quote unquote church, as a congregation, we're not spending as much time together but you're probably in a situation where you're being forced to spend more time with your family, with your kids, with your wife, with your husband, be creative, find something, challenge yourself, challenge yourself to do something. Maybe that, maybe there's something that you've always wanted. Maybe you wanted to always start a podcast. Maybe you've, you've always desired to sit down and record a podcast and get it out there, but you've allowed something. Maybe it was fear. Maybe it was lack of, uh, understanding knowledge that's kept you from putting out a podcast. First of all, you can get a hold of me 
Darren at KingdomBringer.com. I'd love to help you out with that. Or maybe it's something else. Maybe there's, what's something, Ashton? What's something that you've always wanted to try and never did? Um, Maybe something with like baking cookies or something. There you go. Maybe you've wanted to bake cookies. <laughs> maybe you've wanted to cook and you've never done it. You never tried it. I would suggest this is a good time right now to try something new. Do something. Be creative. As Ashton said earlier, when she gets creative with the Lord, when she actually gets into her gifts and creates things, it pulls her closer. It like draws her in to the Father. And she feels and believes that she has a a solid relationship with him once again. Because there's all kinds of things in the world that make you think you don't have access to the Lord that make you think you don't have access to his presence. And and we can stay in that place. We can watch the news all day long, catch up on COVID-19 news, and you're not going to feel like things are in a good place. Maybe it's time to turn that TV off, get away with the Lord, and experience his presence, experience his creative nature, do something different with your kids. I'm glad I had the opportunity with my wife to experience my daughter, not just having the guts to confess that she was struggling with her relationship, but be willing to step into a place of, of seeing that freedom and seeing that growth. So thank you. This was uncomfortable for you too, wasn't it, Ashton? Kind of, yes. Kind of, <laughs> yes. She's used to just saying, this is the Kingdom Bringer Podcast Network. <laughs> or what, what do you say? What, what's the famous line that everybody across the world has heard? You're listening to the KB Podcast Network. it's that giggle that draws them in that's it (laughs) thanks honey for sharing your your heart with us you're welcome appreciate it thank you guys for tuning in this was kind of a quick easy episode but i just wanted to encourage you guys that uh, if you're a father out there don't don't be afraid to have conversations with your kids find out where they're at with the lord ask them straight up ask them how are you with jesus how's your walk with the lord going Have those conversations. Get real with your kids. Ask them where they're at and then encourage them to draw closer to him. Encourage them. Find out what they're, and it's not going to be the way you do it. It may not be the way that that you do things. My daughter's different than me. My wife is different than me. I can sit down here and record a podcast and talk for hours. This is difficult for them. So this might not be the way that they get away and get closer to the Lord. But I promise you there's something. Your child is good at something, desires something, and it's that thing that the Lord's going to use to to draw them closer to him. And so let's get let's get real, let's get honest, let's get tough. Let's have those hard conversations. Let's not be afraid of them. Remember everybody's doing something different. COVID-19 has caused all of us to do things just a little bit different. Homeschooling is different. My wife homeschools, so it really hasn't affected her in that way. But guess what? I'm working from home now, so I'm sitting at the dining room table with my stuff all spread out all throughout the day. I'm affecting her in a a negative way sometimes, and this is why, because she is a, a, she's a mother's heart. She's cares for people. So when she, when I'm sitting there Her instinct is to check on me, see how I'm doing, fill up my water, give me food. Not that I eat very much, but I do. So she's just there and she's always caring for people. And it's affecting her in that way a little bit. Our routine is is broken. Our routine has changed. Her and I just started this exercise routine right before this thing broke out. And like two weeks in, I think her gym gets canceled. I'm starting to work from home, so I'm not, we're not, we're just doing things different. Everybody's doing something different. Shoot me an email. Let me know how this is, how, how you're doing things different, what you're doing different. How's, how's life different for you because of COVID-19? I want to hear about it. Email me, Darren at KingdomBringer.com. Check out KingdomBringer.com for all the blogs, all the podcasts. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share this podcast share it with your friends get it out there we want to have some conversations i hope this was beneficial hope this was a blessing ashton you're amazing 
thank you. The world's going to agree that you're amazing. <laughs> so thank you for joining. Thank you guys for checking us out. We hope that you draw closer to the Lord through creative means. Go do it. Don't hesitate. Get creative. Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Be blessed.